back to another episode of 7 Minutes of Circuits. My name is Michael Siebel and I'm a junior in the Electrical Engineering Program at CSU. And I'm currently enrolled in ECE 312, ECE 332, and ECE 342. Today we will discuss the signal receiving circuit of a radio system and how it relates to concepts learned in each of the three junior year ECE courses. Let's begin with the antenna from an ECE 342 perspective. The antenna, seen here, receives any incoming electromagnetic waves, which induces proportional electric currents in the antenna circuit. From far enough away, the electric field, magnetic field, and the direction of the propagation of the signal are all perpendicular to each other, which is known as an electromagnetic wave. The shape of the antenna is also dictates the reception pattern and which directions the signal is strongest in, as seen here for a basic Hertzian dipole. The size of the antenna will determine the frequency range in which the antenna will produce an output, kind of like a filter. Antenna size is directly proportional to the wavelength of the signal, so when wavelength decreases as in high frequency, the antenna size must also decrease. After the antenna receives a signal and converts it to an electrical current, it continues through the duplexer. The antenna can be used to transmit and receive signals, but not at the same time. The duplexer is basically an electronic switch that connects the antenna to either the transmission circuit or the receiving circuit. From the duplexer, the signal enters the RF front end. The antenna receives a wide range of other signals aside from the data we want to receive, as well as random electromagnetic noise. We need to remove those unwanted signals, so the first stage of the RF front end is a bandpass filter. From ECE 312, we know that the signal at this point is a linear combination of all received signals and noise. To isolate the particular band we want, we use a bandpass filter. A bandpass filter will attenuate all signals with frequencies in the stop band and pass through all signals in the filter's pass band. The output of this filter will contain only the desired frequencies and information modulated on the carrier frequency. To design a bandpass filter, a low-pass and a high-pass filter in series can be used. To the transfer function of a low-pass filter and high-pass filter are about the same, except for different cutoffs. And if a low-pass filter is H of S, then a high-pass filter is H of 1 over S, seen here. From an ECE332 perspective, we can build either an active filter or a passive filter using combinations of resistors, capacitors, and or inductors. An active filter uses more power and can have sharper cutoffs, allowing for a precision filter with a higher gain. A filter that uses capacitors or inductors has an ECE342 component as well. Capacitors and inductors store energy, the former by electric fields and the latter with magnetic fields. After filtering out noise and unwanted frequencies, the signal enters the low noise amplifier. The low noise amplifier boosts the power of the signal while introducing as little noise as possible. From ECE332, we know a simple amplifier can be built using a single common source amplifier CMOS. A better but more costly amplifier can be built using a folded cascode differential amplifier for noise reduction with a feedback loop seen here. Next, the signal goes to the mixer, which we will look at from an ECE312 point of view. The mixer takes the signal from the low noise amplifier, which is in the megahertz range, and demodulates the data signal from the carrier frequency. This results in the signal recentering around zero in the frequency domain. It also creates a copy at twice the carrier frequency, which will be removed later on. Three forms of modulation are amplitude modulation, 
frequency modulation, and phase modulation, each with their own pros and cons. Some examples of these include AM and FM radio in your car, and phase modulation is used in radar systems. Modulations shift the frequency of the signal so it can transmit at higher data rates, increase transmission efficiency and range, and fit within its designated bandwidth. Modulation also allows multiple signals to be sent at the same time without interference. Shifting back to ECE 332, the output of the mixer is sent to the baseband amplifier, which is part of the baseband backend. The baseband amplifier is there to regain the power lost during demodulation in the mixer and to condition the output with the correct DC bias for the analog to digital converters. To reduce cost and size of the circuit, the baseband amplifier can actually be designed into the mixer, allowing one CMOS amplifier to function as both the mixer and the power amplifier. Due to the second order effects of the power amplifier, the output signal contains the modulated signal, as well as multiple harmonics at other frequencies, which all need to be removed. The last stage of the baseband backend is the low pass filter. As described earlier, a low pass filter will remove all signals with frequencies higher than the designed cutoff. So the low pass filter removes all higher order harmonics of the signal that were created in the mixer and the baseband amplifier. The output is the desired signal with little to, to no noise and almost none of the extra harmonics, ready for analog to digital conversion. Combining the lessons learned in each of the three junior year ECE courses, 312, 332, and 342, we were able to fully describe the signal receiving circuit of a radio system. Unfortunately, this is the last episode of Seven Minutes of Circuits, but I want to thank you for your, all of your time, and I hope you have enjoyed today's presentation. Have a great day.